Just one second, I'll put your slides onto the big screen. Yeah, no, I was Perfect. Joanna, it's all good? Yep, ready? Okay. Welcome, everyone. How are you? I'm Juliana Villa, and welcome to the workshop on neuroimaging application on the CVL platform. Um, again, I'm Juliana Villa, and I'm talking on behalf of the Australian Characterization, Commons and Skill Project. Um, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand today and pay my respects to the elders past and present. I thank that the respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Uh, we have an interesting program for you. Let me... Oh, okay. So we have, um, I will hand it over after a quick presentation about the ACCS project. I will hand it over to my colleague, Jay, uh, for an introduction to the characterization virtual laboratory. And then we have Chao Su um, taking you through the open access data available on CVL, as well as the tools on CVL, um, followed by a 45 minute hands, um, hands on session. Um, so hopefully you enjoy the workshop. So the ACCS is a national scale project to accelerate image processing, analysis, and publication. We have um, co-investors from uh, 10 different universities, three increased facilities, and two Australia Research Council Center of Excellence, and a numerous of flagship instruments. This is a $5.2 million project uh, for about 2.5 years. Um, we started in the middle of, April, uh, middle of 2020. Um, we the project finishes in February 2023. Um, ACCS is developing a coherent and accessible informatic landscape that promotes collaboration, increases return on investment, and delivers value to researchers. Um, to uh, concrete, uh, the concrete aspect of what we're delivering is what we call the characterization. Um, the characterization commas, which is really an ecosystem, is not one thing. It's a, a group of a, a group of things, an ecosystem of computing services, systems, um, data repository, uh, data and repositories, workflows, um, services, uh, all connected to instruments. The ACCS has three specialized programs, um, and one of those is the uh, biomedical imaging collection and analysis, which is the one delivering this um, workshop for you today. Um, what we do in practice, uh, we are deploying tools and services across four different nodes, Massive at Monash University, the University of Queensland, University of Western Australia, and the University of Sydney. Uh, we are doing a lot of work on interoperability between tools. Um, we are integrating flagship, flagship instruments, building community, uh, training researchers. Um, we build sustainability through um, direct engagement with institutions, and we are also addressing data collections, data repositories as the key outcome of the project. And um, how do we do this? We deploy tools, systems, and techniques to integrate and underpin instruments. We support remote desktops, access tools, data, and service at scale. Um, we uh, continue to integrate, uh, deploy, and containerize an associated technology and in integration with instrument of research management and repositories. Sorry, having trouble moving my slides. Um, the, I wanted to also take you through um, what we do in work package five, which is the biomedical imaging collection and analysis work package. Um, so they have um, three different uh, streams of work. Um, and one is the training, which is the one um, delivering this workshop for you today. Uh, the second one is to provide access to terabytes of commonly used neuroimaging data collections that can be managed 
um, centrally by authorized researchers to use and make sure that data is close to the computation for those computational um, intensive image processing pipelines that can be run on the um, analysis environment. And the third um, stream of work is the infrastructure support to multi-node, um, the multi-node Australian data collections. Here we collaborate with different projects uh, across Australia, for example, AIS, which is the Australian Imaging Services at the University of Sydney. And um, finally, I wanted to show you also the data collections we have available on HPC through the ACCS project at Massive. Um, you can contact us if you are interested in any of these data collections. And I will um, now hand it over to my colleague, Jay, who is going to take you through the CVL, um, the Characterization uh, Virtual Laboratory, uh, which is currently part of the ACCS project. Over to you, Jay. Thanks, Juliana. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jay Van Scandal. I'm a member of the Massive team, and I'm also a member of the ACCS project with a focus on work package four, which is about big data. Um, so what is the CVL, the Characterization Virtual Laboratory? So it depends upon your perspective, I guess, but from my point of view, the CVL is a, is a program of work that connects instruments with data management environments, tools, analysis, pipelines on the Australian Research Cloud. So um, 100 plus instruments have been integrated into the CVL. Um, there's been thousands of users, plus also some software has been specifically developed to run on the CVL. Um, the idea of this is so that if you're at an instrument, you can um, gather all your, all, all your primary data and then it will be hopefully um, moved to the computing platform so that you can easily get access to that data and commence processing within a timely manner. And then uh, once you've completed processing, there should hopefully be, um, let's say, a data management tool in place so that you can expose your data for, um, for sharing if you want to um for publication and also long-term storage um, from a, a researcher's point of view um the cvl is a place where you can basically analyze your data access the software tools you need to do that um all in, all in one place so can we please move thank you juliana <laughs> okay accessing the cvl uh so for those who have seen the CVL previously, there's a, a URL, cvl.org.au. Um, this is going to be decommissioned in the near future, and it's being um, moved into the Imaging Tools website, which has been developed as part of the um, ACCS project. So please use the link on this slide. Um, so the CVL desktop, it's a remote desktop environment that provides researchers access to the tools and the data they need. So in most cases, it's but from a massive point of view, it's running on a HP high performance computing system and the similar at um, UQ. And it, UW, UWA, it's using uh, Nectar hardware. Um, and these are typically, uh, these are Linux environments, not Windows. Okay. So in order to work out which site you need to use, um, there's a few different criteria. Um, so you need to work out, um, do, you have access, do you have an account on the system? Um, where, where is your data stored currently that you need to process? And does your home institution have an affiliation with the site? So each access to the different sites, the criteria is different. So I'd suggest having a look at the, um, the website um, link shown on this page. And like for instance, if you're um, from Queensland um, or a, um, an affiliated organization with QCIF, which is also related to um, the University of Queensland, probably Vena might be your best place to get access to, um, to the CVL. Okay. Um, I'm from Monash. So, oops, can we go back a little bit, please, Juliana? Thank you. <laughs> so I'm from Massive. So um, in order to get access to Massive, uh, I'll provide a few more details on that in just a second but generally you need to be a partner of Massive or um, a staff member of Monash. 
Uh, the C and um, the CVL UW UWA typically runs at Pawsey. So if you're from UWA, um, it's very, it should be easy if you move your data to that site rather than having to transfer your data across the country to use compute in Queensland or Massive. Um, so as I said, please look at this site and it will hopefully give you the information you need to get access to each of the um, different locations. Um, next slide, please, Juliana. Okay, connecting to the CVL. So most users typically use our Strudel Web, which is the software for um, accessing each of those locations. And there's a link on, sorry, there's a page on imaging tools on how to actually do that. Um, there is a, an old desktop program, but it's currently not heavily supported. So um, you may have difficulties running that. So I recommend you use Strudel um, I've got a screenshot here of what Strudel version two looks like. Um, Strudel will let you, will give you access to actually spin up the desktop on the computing platform you're connected to. Um, it also will allow you to quickly access a Jupyter Lab notebook, which is pretty handy for data processing and also a terminal. Uh, and these are the two URLs on this page, um, but there are but there are additional details for um, on on the imaging tool site. the The actual site, when you initially log in, it lets you choose whether you're going to um, Vena, Massive, or uh, CVL at UWA. Okay. So there's a single entry point for each of those. Thanks, Juliana. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, accessing the CVL at Massive. I'm a Massive person, so um, I'm gonna focus on Massive, but um, if you need access to Vena at UQ, please have a look at the uh, imaging site. So to request an account at Massive, well, first of all, you need an account on the Massive HPC. So um, obviously you need to go to the link on this page. Now, in order to actually, in order, to, once you've got an account, you also then need to be a member of a project. So we have typically two classifications of projects on Massive. There are CVL projects. These will give you access to um, to run compute on the system, but also you'll get 50 gigabytes of storage in our slash projects folder and 100 gig on our slash scratch folder. If you need more storage, and your, uh, your institution is a massive partner or you're a Monash staff member, you can apply for your own project on Massive. This would typically give you much access to larger, larger amounts of storage. Um, but I just wanna emphasize that you, you, you must be a project member in order to access the compute because um, when we spin up a desktop behind the scenes, you're actually running a job on the cluster. That's how the desktops actually work. Uh, I've got the link to Strudel Web there. And if you do need any help, please email us to the Massive Help Desk, help at Massive. And we'll, um, we'll do our best to answer your questions. Even if you're not quite sure which site to go to, um, we'll do our best to help you out and point you in the right direction. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Jay. That was very helpful. And thank you, everyone. Uh, we hand it over to um, Chow now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jay and Juliana, for this. Um, great, very clear to show what is um, CVL. So um, I'm going to start my slides. So I'm going to carry from here. So just to clarify, so we will, we basically, this is a hybrid. Uh, workshop now. So we have Juliana and uh, Jay is presenting uh, remotely and then I'm here and Aswin is going to join us later in the second sessions. Um, and then when hands on to start, I will be here and just go through everything with everyone. Yeah, as I said before, if you want to start to set up your account, just use that tinyurl.com slash ABBS FNCVL just to get information. Um, all right, so before I start everything, I want to just talk about what, why, we, why we want a CVL. And even before that, I will just talk a little bit about myself and share with you guys what my experience is. Before that, my undergraduate is a physics and engineer. And then I came to start a PhD 
and it's a typical projects on neural imaging to be precisely is MRI. So it's a multimodality structure, resting state, function MRI, um, DTI. I did a fair bit of the spectroscopy. Uh, that's a lot of things. And then after that, I moved to, and I was in Sydney, and then I moved to Monash and working there as like a technique manager and also research as a for nearly 10 years. Um, yeah, so that's myself. To say that is I've been through a typical neuroimaging persons through PhD to workings all the way to here. And then my, most of my job is dealing with the imaging analysis. I'm not sure you're doing that or your team is doing it. Um, and I have facing all of these problems of computer related problems once and once again. Like you start with working, running on your laptop, it's too small and you need a desktop and the desktop is not enough. And then you know, probably your group starts to say, okay, let's build a cluster or let's buy a cluster. And you have this cluster and the cluster has clusters issues, sometimes hardware broken down, software is contradicted with each other, it's not working. You upgrade something and your colleague saying, right, because you upgrade, FSL, my patch is not working. And also if you're at deadline, you want have, you want to start run something and you see the queue is there and it's out of control. Um, and then since I was in Monash, I started working. So I started to use, that time we call it a massive M2. So when we say M2, M3 and the massive are the same thing, they're all Monash things. And this is also the one I'm going to explain with you. And I found it's really, um, the, the changing my life. And then I also working with all of the whole team. Um, I mainly work with Alex Fornito team and then Nerd's team. So basically everyone just don't rely on the computer anymore. And we all become CVL or massive addictors. Um, and if a massive one day is not working, they have their planned service. Basically you still don't see much people just sitting in the, in the lab. They say, oh, nothing to work apart from writing papers. Um, so I just, then I just highlight a few things. I really want to hopefully you can understand the advantage of CVL um, and then see by the end of the day, if there's something that you need and then we try to really in the hands on and you can try it, you feel it and it can start to kick off some little projects or some works on the practice on it. Hopefully it can benefit for you or your team. So the first thing is very important for this platform is I aiming mean, is imaging tools. So we're going to touch base less later here. It is very, very convenient. You get all of this neuroimaging, not all of, but you can think about it. Hundreds of them is already installed there um, through different techniques. So for CVR and Massive, we use module. I can show you it's quite easy to load something. Um, CVR at Wayner is uh, uh, neural desk and containerized. And as we're going to touch base on that. Um, and also you can load multiple different versions. So you can have an instance of running free surface 5.03, which is reproduce your PhD work. And you got another free surface running the, the latest version and to run something else. So you can do it in the same time. So it's no problem at all. This is very important for us. And that's the imaging tools. So that's a big advantage. And also the next things I'm going to touch base in this particular session is the data collection. So data collections, um, here we're going to talk about HCP. So the open access data, so you get more and more data um, you need to manage. So you will find in how easy that we already have some of the data preloaded on CVI at Massive and just one step away from where's your script and you can just run it. And a lot of people's PhD is relies on open access data. You can see how much time you save. And also cluster computing. Because the CVI is a huge, I will show you later in the tools talk how powerful it is. I got a thousand or ten thousands of cores. A uh, massive team, a uh, lovely massive team will tell us how powerful it is. And then because neural imaging naturally each person have one modality of image, then you can easily send it to parallels. And it's through the Slurm system and you can get your things working. And also if you if you want a GPU accelerate, some people have special on that. So that will provide a really powerful GPU upgrade. You can have reserves really high levels of GPU. So if we get time, the, the third part of the uh, machine learning. So we're going to use, take advantage of that and we'll see how fast it is. And another thing compare, a little bit contrast with the, the traditional um, cluster is there, the, the, the V is for visualize. So you got a visualization. 
if I put them here, so basically once you own the visualization, you basically as a desktop. So this is probably for a lot of people who's using um, classic computer, they don't, they, they, they don't appreciate, but for a lot of junior students, they really want something really to start to click buttons, where's the file, it's all there and it's so easy. And secondly is they install all of the visualization tools in there like, uh, uh, like ITK toolbox and also the FSA view, free views, uh, 3D slices. You can generate beautiful pictures easily. And then I mean, when you're imaging, a lot of work is about beautiful picture. So it's very handy. And another thing is cloud computing. So now every day, now everything is, yeah, is quite trying to uncloud. So you have the advantage of the group all working together. So you got a scraper here and tell your supervisor say it's done and then it's there and he runs it, modified it and you got a data stored and everyone just working that's very, very nice, smoothly, one thing. And secondly, everything is on the cloud. It doesn't rely on your local computers. It can be just a shit computer as so we got a good signal, a good, uh, a good web, web, um, internet, Wi-Fi. And if you are running out of um, powers or something, everything's still there. So within the war time, you can always resume. And also we have the lovely team, um, like you see some of them, um, Juliana and, uh, and the Jays and the Philips is on another room so waiting for us if we need it. They're really lovely. And then without them, nothing is going to be um, achieved. So just take example. I'm not quite sure if you're doing DTI, you know, there's some toolbox called MR tricks. It will take you really hard time to install it on each computers. And these guys, so they're doing, they use two weeks to install everything and then all of the versions there. Now for us, it's just one common module load, MR tricks, everything is ready for you to run. And then other benefits we can touch base later, so like set up the Pythons or et cetera, um, that's all there. Um, just mind of the time. So we'll just quickly go to the data collections here. Um, so I'm basically everything I talked about here. So we can, probably is a little bit of push, a little bit of fast. But at the final, at the end of the, um, the sessions, all of my talks and then all of the slides for hands-on sessions, and it will be, I will send it to you if you put the emails in there. And also most of the, um, the materials has been um, delivered before. So through those, these slides, you can find um, that previous talk and also the, um, the hands-on sessions, um, the, the screen recordings can always come back to it. So this is something like we delivered before about the data collections. Um, so I make a little bit um, shorter this time. So we're gonna to touch base a few things. So firstly, we're gonna do quickly go through what is biomedical imaging um, data collections um, on, C um, uh, on ACCS, or especially this is CVR at Massive because we're a Massive user. And then let's go in a little bit deep into the HCP data. Um, and then we'll just quickly touch base how to access to it. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in Massive. And finally, I'm going to just quickly touch base and what going to happen in the hands-on sessions. Okay. Um, so before that, may I ask questions? Um, so is everyone's working on neuroimaging work, I guess? I have previously. So Previous. recently. Uh, fMRI data. FMRI yes. data, any oh, imaging? I think FMRI and vascular imaging. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, functional yeah. imaging. Functional imaging. Okay, cool, great. Yeah, one of the FMRI. Okay, good, good, good. And but when you process data, do you use the CVL? Have you heard of that or running on CVLs already? Yes, well, funny story. I just uh, was using a previous resource that uh, I got kicked off. <laughs> and uh, so literally last week they said you should try CVL. And so uh, I, I signed up, but okay. I haven't ever looked at it or accessed it or um, I haven't actually gotten yet. So um, I've opened the screen, but that's about all my experience with CVL. So I'm very excited. Okay. Learn about using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. And for you guys, no, um, no, 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 I, no. I have another problem. No, no. So I'm just out there in general. Okay. Um, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, yeah, for the whole ACCS, this lovely project is actually pushing that really hard in the CVL so to work, make it uh, national wise and uh, scale it up is so really just yeah so that's the future <laughs> um okay so that's good so and you, you guys know a little bit of imaging so i i know which part i can be a little bit quick and so all right so this is 
Jay was showing that before talking about the, all of the data collection. So this is a list of them. Uh, we don't have time to go through that, but just highlight one thing. So the HCP data is got a 1200 of the data, which is I think probably one of the biggest and most popular data set is in there. So we do have several studies or, or projects and then students is basically rely on it. And we're working really hard on this. Um, and all of this information of how to the data access is all here. So once you got to this copy of the slides, you'll be able to navigate it to there. So if you are CVI and massive, that's how you're gonna get access to it. And then the data is there, just a slash. If you know Linux a little bit, it's just from the root and the scratch and HTTP 12, um, 1200 and it's there. You can just get the data, access to it, copy to your own directories and start to work on it. Oops. Um, again, we also have, this is the lifespan data and also the early psychosis data. Uh, for the previous one, HCP data is fairly easy. Once you have the account, you can access to HCP data. As long as it's the same email address, you get access to HCP website. And in the same email address, you access to uh, CVR at Massive. I think the authentication will talk with each other and then you will be, and you ask you when you apply it, they will prove you. And then you will join this special group and then you can access to the HCP data on, on, um, on CBL. Um, uh, however, the early psychosis and the, um, the, the aging study, they, they have a little bit more sensitive data. So you need one further levels of, of, um, of applications on the HCP website. But again, the same thing, once you get that levels, you will be able to get and to access to all of this data. And I also have um, other image data. Um, it's the NKI data and the GSP data. If you're interested, it's the data. Well, I just saying there'll be more coming in and we're working through it. And we want also you know, more working on how to for the other nodes also get access to this data. Okay, so what is HCP data? Um, probably everyone heard of that before. Yeah, so that's one of the earliest uh, data initiatives start to open access data. So still it's the popular and then the largest one, the largest subset is the HCP 1200s, the young adults. And again, as I said, there'll be all subset is coming and then it's, we're gonna slightly, slightly uh, pull down to the CVL. Um, how to access these data. So straight away, there are three ways to do it. You can download directly from the Canaptome database and you can order the hard drive um, and also you can access to CVI Massive. Um, just quickly go through this, yeah, get access. I think we just skip this. Um, that's how you get access to data. You can run it at the individual levels, go into their particular sequence and you can download. And you can see once you download, for example, if you want to download um, structured process data, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, it's taking a long time to download. Um, and the people don't want to wait, like what we did before. We just ordered a hard drive, uh, but we order that, and then a lot that then that's S five hundred. So we got a five hundred, and then they become nine hundred, now twelve hundred. So we just keep going, couldn't catch up. Um, yeah, we skip that AWS, but this is how we could get it easily. So we have now have the HCP twelve hundred already there. So this is just when you click that link in the in Docs at Massive, and this is telling you how to access to it. Um, and then through your portals, you can just like add in another software, then, but you add in another HCP data access. So once you got that, say for example, I'm here, I got the HCP data and then I should be able to access to it. Um, what does it looks like? Um, it will looks like this. So here, I can just quickly show you. So there, there it is. And you can open, ah, I can just do. I always like a terminal and you can just, as I said, you go to scratch HCP 1200. Yeah, that's everyone. It's already there. You don't need to download. Yep. If you go to, I remember this one, all of the data is there. So I'm um, proc. Yeah, the image is there. 
we zip it for to save the space and there's a long term uh, there's a planning is later this year we're going to buy more space and we unzip it so make it even easier you can even load it and read it so for the hands-on session we copy particularly one in there because not everyone get access to it so but we will have a look and we can browse around it um yeah and also if again if you like click button oh sorry like click buttons So it's there and you can navigate around it. It's like a, my computer and just copy paste whatever you like. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm about to show you. Um, and what is later on, if we get time for the hands-on sessions, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to use some toolbox like FSLs, or we also get a connect to bench work to actually load these data and you will see how easy it is and then the visualizes that can be really, really beautiful. Um, I'm not going to details on here. Um, yeah, again, this is what I was shown before. So if you already have, you know, some of them already have um, massive account, this is how you get access to it. If you haven't, you want a temporary account, go to that tinyurl.com and ATBS CVL. And then as you click on there, so you go into um, this information side. Um, oh yeah, we have already someone in there, so which is good. So if you, oh, <laughs> oh good, <laughs> uh, that's a, that's perfect. Um, okay, so I really need to mind the time. So a bit over time. So I will quickly. My next session is the tools on CVL. So. Uh, here it will be. Um, I will start with talking about the neural imaging and the parallel computing. So, because of we don't have much time, so I unfortunately I use the structure. We probably I'm planning for another sessions later this year. We're talking about um, fMRI prep or some function MRI stuff and probably the high, uh, high level DTI stuff. Uh, we'll stay on till, but today we prepare the structure stuff. And then Aswin is going to, to talk about the containerized and the neural desk at uh, CVI at Wainer, which is uh, the, the, the local one. Um, it's really, really cool. And then it's very, very convenient as well. Um, and the last one, we're going to come back and to see what others um, function we can achieve. So Jubit Lab, Lab, which is the one that um, Jay touched it before. So they use J GPU accelerations and then if you're familiar with the Python, you want to do some machine learning, which is mainly Python uh, dominant, and you can see it's easy to set up. I got a script there and then we can run through it. Um, let me see, I supposed to finish the next one in about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so that's going to the first part of the imaging tools. Um, so again, so I'm, I'll be very quick, but all of this has been, we have a really comprehensive one. You can catch up for, from the screen record and you can also catch up the slide as well. And we have also the slides uh, video and that one was mainly for the hands-on session. Okay, so uh, again, let's come back to say why we need this. And then, so here, if you remember, this is all the rationale of the whole workshop. This one gonna talking about imaging tools and cluster computing. So this is two benefits on CVL. And also I, I, I was, when I was planning this, I was thinking, um, we need, so this one particular, the hands-on sessions is not, I only tell you how good it is. I want to show you how it can work. So one day is that you can use my talk, use my script, I give it to you that you can, you can work on it. You can run through things. Uh, why are doing that? Because none of us are researchers, not programmers. We, we just get things, we try to get things to run, but we're not in the elegant way. Um, and sometimes this is the situations they, you don't know where to start. And then the best way I always find is if you hand over of some of the script that's already running, you make the modification towards your projects and it's the quickest way to get things running. And also it's a lack of the documentation. And you probably have this painful um, experience before you get a script, but you don't know what it is. But once you get things running and we don't really do the uh, um, right back um, to put all of the information in there. So this is, this is what I, the, the starting point. And also the third one, remember there's another one called the cluster computing. So why we need that? Because sample size is really big things now. The recent papers in Nature's, um, they're talking about if you just want to do a cross-sectional validate of 
any of the pairs of connection and function connectivities within what kind of the behavior measurements or clinical or psychology measurements, they estimate you probably need a tens of couple of thousand or tens of thousands of samples. So that's open access data is, is probably the trend. Um, and then, but on the other hand, if we got enough processors and you basically have an unlimited process, you just like run one person because we can easily independent across the participants. Um, and again, so the trend of everything is on the cloud now, even you're playing games, everything's on the cloud now. So that's how are we going to take advantage of that? So if, for example, if a CVL, I use this little diagram to think about the CVL that the desktop I show you, it's here. It's a little fractions of the computers is working in no matter it's massive or CVL at Wainers, it's the same. And we are these users from our local computers to access to it. And then there's actually a big bunch. Um, I would say 80 or 70% of the nodes is actually behind the scenes. They are the actually workers. There's a lot of them. And then that's the challenge of starting. So we already have to pull our hairs to manage all of this coding environment, get a script running. Some software is probably easy as a bash script, so you can run easily. Some is MATLAB, like the SPM, some is a Python. And how do we get these into here and to get recruiting all of these working nodes together? So there's something called Slum, Slum Manager. So I just adding another old layers of complexity. So, but to think back that, that that's I try to solve it. So through all of these documentations and the scripts I gave you, I really want you to use this as a shortcut to get through here. So I call this some missing menus. So I have the scripts already. So we just manage here, changing there, and then we get things running. Okay. Um, to be quick, so the background. So CVL's background, I think probably I'm going to be a little bit quicker here. So we're going to touch the background of here. And also I'm going to introduce these three um, very typical structure imaging processing the pre-surfer, FCL first, and the SPM 12, which is the MATLAB based. And then here, I only do the introductions for the next five minutes. Um, and then if we get time in the hands-on sessions, I'm going to, for each pipeline, I'm going to show you the scripts of how to run through three things. So visualize the results and then run it in the terminal. So you don't afraid of um, terminal anymore. And the third one is how to use the Slurm to parallelize a couple of little projects, five or six participants together, get things running. Hopefully, I can get the missing menu. Yeah, question. Are the, are the interface um, nodes uh, good enough to test, like, Simple batches before we send them to Storm. Exactly. Yes. All right. CVL. CVL. Um, sorry. The, the 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 visual notes when you're logging, you can select a different level. But even the basic level, it's it's give you. I think it's a six core, um, thirty something gigabytes of RAM. It's definitely for you to run some basic things. It's okay, and you can also upgrade to the the high perform. It will give you like thirty. You you can review. Basically, you can reserve the whole node to run that testing it, and once it's happy, and you get a script to shoot to the uh, user slurp, to shoot to the uh, working node. Good question. Um, okay, so two things I want to highlight here. First is the software. Um, so this is, I'll put it in there, and then once you log on it, you can see how many, um, I think, I think probably, I should have it stored somewhere. Um, All right, pretty low. One, two. Yeah. So if you go to this website, um, you will see all of the softwares that we installed. Um, or we call it the software on M3 and the install modules here. And it's from the alphabetic way. So there are so many softwares that's already pre installed and they have a different versions of it. So, for example, if I open here, uh, module low, just module low. Say I want FSL and I just click tap and they give you all of the options that can autofill. So this is all of the FSL is pre-installed there. And then say you just want to um, 6.0.3. Yep. They only, they lead, they 
load FSL and all of the dependence. So everyone is detested. So you should be able to load any of the things and straight away the software is there and you can run. Cool. And of course you can, if you like the, we like the press button. So, so applications, applications, um, I think, ah, there you go, neural imaging. Um, we can go to FSL or whatever. All of the softwares are here as well. So it's a different way that you load it. Cool. Um, we don't. We can skip this, but I'm just showing. There's a lot of cores in there, and but all of these workers or the CPUs are the actually working node. So we need to get through the, the Slurm system and to submit the job. Okay. So I'm gonna skip this because we all know what it is and we're gonna focusing on the T1 image. Um, there were three major things we're gonna to touch base. Um, I just thinking if everyone know what is a free server FSL and we can skip this part. Um, we can come back to that later. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. It's gonna take a long time, but we're gonna to come back to details in hands-on sessions for all of this script. Um, so there's a free server and the FSL first is the subcortical segmentations. You get subcortical regions and can do shapes and the volume analysis. Um, SPM is one of my favorite because it's MATLAB based cross platform. Um, today's task I already prepared is a longitudinal pipeline. So I wanna add in some different flavors. Now we need two inputs and the output, what it looks like, how we're gonna do it. Um, yeah, we're gonna go through this in the hands-on sessions. It's a similar slides. Uh, this is how we run interactively and we change my lab code and we'll get it run. Don't worry, all of this script also saved and you can always take it back and recheck. Um, if you follow that, you should get all the way to there. Uh, this amount of time, so I need to um, finish this part a little bit earlier. Uh, so already late. Um, and now I can I can give my uh, the stage to Aswin. Hello, Aswin. Can you hear us? Aswin. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect, Aswin. Yeah. So. Awesome. Aswin is your local um, CVL guru um, at at Winner uh, at uh, UQ. So you can see the background. Um, so he's going to talk about the. Um, uh, Containerizers and the and the and the neural desk. That's how they uh, very unique and very special good functions at um, um, the win um, CVI win or CVI UQ. Okay, Aswit, you can start your talk now. Yeah. Can everyone see the the slides? Just one second. I'll put your slides on the main screen. One oh, yeah, second. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. So is it there? Yes, yes, we can all see. Awesome, and here. So uh, hello everyone, I'm Ashwin. I'm the National Imaging Informatics uh, Fellow for the Queensland Node. So I'm mostly based out of uh, CAI. Uh, we basically assist um, all sorts of imaging related uh, um, re research work and computing infrastructure for, for all that work. So CVL is uh, one of the projects that um, National Imaging Facility has uh, invested in um, as a contribution. Um, so I, I'll start talking about containers, um, the NeuroDesk project, which is something that um, me and a, a team uh, at UQ also have developed, and the CVL that we know and how it integrates with containers and NeuroDesk. Uh, to start off, I think um, this is one of the big challenges we have in imaging and compute, uh, research compute, which is we have a lot of software uh, and it creates a lot of problems. Um, scientific software is very challenging. Most of them require Linux. Uh, not everyone has access to a machine running Linux or, and um, even if they do, it's not distributed often by a simple package manager. There are some solutions nowadays like uh, Snap and uh, AppImage and these things, but still this is, this is a pretty uh, um, distributed um, system. It's not, uh, there's a lot of challenges in trying to get stuff done, especially in research, because it's always new things being done. So existing software 
uh, infrastructure is not ready to handle a lot of the problems that uh, researchers often face. Um, a lot of uh, software has to be compiled from a source, but this is tricky. It doesn't always work correctly. Uh, the uh, developers aren't aware of all the different configurations that their software is being built into, so uh, they're not able to take uh, into effect all the various problems that can turn up. Um, a lot of fixes require us to deviate from documentation, and then you're not sure how to rebuild your software package once it's done the first time. So, and and then there's the additional problem that research software often has to run on high computing systems. And they are often in that older version of Linux because of uh, security and uh, and also um, trying to keep the system stable. So you can't always have the latest version to support the latest libraries. Um, and of, of course, uh, librarians and dependencies, um, there's conflicting libraries. Uh, software one in your pipeline might need library version one, and then the second one might need version two, and they don't like to run side by side. Uh, a workstation that you're using might have one software, but then the pipeline needs an older version or a fork of a existing uh, package. So there's a lot of version and conflicting dependency issues that we have to worry about. Uh, so a lot of time is spent just trying to install a software. That's usually a huge chunk of a lot of uh, work, actually. And it has nothing to do even with the research part. So you haven't even started on actually doing the analysis or the pipelines. Um, and then you want to you run it on one machine, everything goes well, and then you have to move somewhere else due to more performance or just having to migrate to a different system, and then it all breaks and you have to start all over again. Um, and um, things get updated all the time, and it breaks things that were already working. So uh, even if things are working now, it doesn't guarantee they'll be working tomorrow. This is a well-recognized problem. There's been uh, publications and things on reproducibility and, uh, issues in neuroimaging. Uh, like, for example, there's this uh, famous uh, glibc library, which caused a difference in a floating point result that causes differences in the results in the pipeline. So that's not something we want. Uh, having different results based on which library you used is just not, not very uh, reassuring. Um, even a major um, system like Python, which everyone uses and is well established, has such a horrible... Um, um, dependency and um, installation nightmare because there's so many ways to run them. There's even Python 2 and Python 3. A lot of things haven't been ported into new Python and things like that. So I think we're all aware of uh, these kind of issues that we're having. Um, but the problem is solutions for this uh, have to uh, walk a very fine line because we don't want to create a new standard that tries to fix everything, but all it does is just create another competing standard. We all are aware of these problems. Uh, that's one of the challenges with things like Snap and App Image. We just end up with another thing that we have to worry about on top of everything else. Um, so a use case, let's say a researcher wants to do an iPad pipeline that uses um, a, a library called TGVQSM and also uses FSL and Mink to do some of the analysis and visualization. Um, we have a number of problems that can turn up. Um, the uh, TGVQSM, for instance, uses Python 2. It hasn't been updated because the um, developers haven't had time to bring up the latest version. Uh, now, iPipes on Python 3. FSL needs to run on Linux, and it has, maybe has a conflicting library with Minx. So uh, you get stopped on all sorts of issues at this stage. Um, so, and on top of that, we want to we want to prototype this pipeline in a Windows 10 laptop, but then you want to run it on a window in a Linux workstation at the university or run it on a uh, rocks cluster um, and or HPC and then you want to share it to other people so this this is creating a lot of different issues that can happen when you're trying to do all of these uh, things so um, our solutions I think both uh, CVL and uh, Neurodesk they agree that well, we don't want to like reinvent the wheel and um, build something completely new. There is a certain number of things that already exist. Um, for example, um, there's containerization. So Docker and Singularity are big names in, in the space. Uh, there's a project called Referendum, a reproducible in neuroimaging. So they have uh, things like NeuroDocker, which is used to prototype, uh, used to generate uh, container recipes and things like that and other, other, other systems. Uh, for example, Python, even though we have problems with that, we um, we don't want to, they already have the wonderful Conda uh, package manager. So we're not trying to um, re um, do some, we want to repurpose whatever already exists and try to just bring it together so we can do the research. 
uh, and there is systems that do this already, like NeuroDeviant's an excellent example. So if you're on a Deviant system, you can use NeuroDeviant to install all, pretty much all standard neuroimaging tools. Uh, there is challenges. For example, that's it's specific to Deviant, so that's that's already a challenge. You're forced to run Deviant, whereas a lot of uh, computing systems might be running CentOS, or you might be on Windows, so you have to set up a VM and things like that. Um, and then if you want to move on to cloud, that's also an additional layer. Um, so this is where maybe we'll first look at what previously existed, which is virtual machines versus containers. Um, so I'm I'm not sure, probably everyone knows about containers, but I might just run through it quickly. So virtual machines used to be what uh, we'd use for these cases, and they are still used widely. Um, so you will have the hardware layer, like a Dell Precision uh, machine, like a PC, and then you'll install a host OS like CentOS, for instance, or if it's HPC, also it'll be like that. Uh, then you have the hypervisor virtualization layer, and which can be VMware or VirtualBox, on which you install your your guest OS, which is your actual virtual machine, and um, it'll have like a library like say Qt4 for ITK Snap and things like that. Um, but the thing is, um, this uh, the center two is what the virtual machine mostly handles, and we don't really we're not really concerned with the actual machine at hand. It doesn't matter whether the virtual machine had. Uh, it will when you create a virtual machine, you have to decide how much CPU cores you want, or how much memory you want to assign to it, or how to attach a hard disk, or uh, which network cards you. These are not things that concern a pipeline or analysis. What we're mostly concerned with is the application and the libraries, and this is where containerization really solves this, because a container just uses as much resource is available to you, or you can uh, throttle it, but it's not. It doesn't give us this whole baggage of having to work with this layer of how much you want to allocate your virtual machine before it stops your host machine from running smoothly. Um, so I think uh, luckily um, cloud computing and software has solved this problem. And as we've inherited these problems from the software space, um, we also inver inheriting the solutions, which is like the containers. So a container is basically a lightweight virtual machine um that um is mostly concerned with the os and the libraries and the application which is actually our reproducibly problem from before it's also very portable uh their first they use uh recipes of basically script or yaml files or things like that to describe uh, how to build the container so as long as you use the same build engine and the uh recipe you can reproduce the same container so um, this really helps with research reproducibility as well and enables you to share a very complicated uh, infrastructure setup for your machine with anyone else uh, in the world actually quite easily, just using a text file. Um, it also lets us move across from a wide variety of compute platforms. So we have things like, uh, we often want to prototype on a individual machine because uh, we might want to do rapid changes and we don't want to deal with like network connections to remote uh, in, uh, units and things like that. So you might prototype a very small part of your uh, pipeline. So you'll end up using your personal uh, laptop or PC that you've been assigned or things like that. Uh, but then those won't last you too long when you have a lot of data to deal with. So then you have to move on to workstations and to more powerful systems like CVL. Um, and uh, once you've got your visualization done and more your prototyping done, you can move on to the clusters to run the analysis in in uh, in Sloan cluster and things like that. Or you can just go cloud and just do whatever you want for whatever much power you want, but you have to pay for uh, how much you use. And um, at, at UQ, I think uh, this uh, we want to support all four of these use cases with uh, storage in the form of RDM collections and um, tools in the form of containers, whether it's on Neurodesk containers on your PC or CVL software containers. So we wanted to scale across all four of these, uh, these general groups. Um, so Neurodesk is a project where we build these containers and um, um, push it out to users in various different forms. Uh, the containers are built using uh, NeuroDocker recipes. So NeuroDocker is just this project that does boilerplate uh, container recipes because a lot of container um, recipes are pretty standard, like just setting up your OS and the default packages you need and things like that. Um, we've got an automated building system for this. So uh, once we've got a build script for a new uh, software, we just use that and build a whole set of new containers and we have like hundreds of containers now. 
Uh, so this is the full list on CVL at Wiener. So this is a CVL desktop at Wiener. Um, once you log in, you can go to the characterization virtual laboratory tab on the application section. And under neuroimaging tools, it's under neurodesk and it's sub all the all the softwares are subdivided into their individual categories, but then there's a whole application list. And then you also have the CVL um, based containers as well. Um, so this is how you can access uh, the neurodesk containers from a CVL on Wiener. Um, it also uses the module system. Um, so one of the things is using multiple softwares for at the same time for your pipeline. So you want to make sure they can run multiple of them at the same time, but without them conflicting with each other. So we just use the same thing that HPC uses, which is the module system. Uh, it's currently stored on the Scratch CBL admin NeuroDesk local contains modules under Wiener on the root. Uh, so all you have to do is module use that path, and then you can load up whichever container you, you want from the from the big list. Uh, every application there is a, is a Singularity subcontainer. So all of them are actually Docker containers built and converted into Singularity. Uh, so everything is containerized and running within a container. You can download the container directly from uh, NeuroDesk itself in case you want to use it for another uh, platform uh, like your PC or cloud or something like that. Um, we, as part of the NeuroDesk project, uh, the other aspect is we want these to run in CVL and in cloud and things, but also on your own machine. Uh, so we do this by packaging into into a Docker container called NeuroDesk. Uh, it uses Apache Guacamole for the web rendering, so uh, it only requires Docker, and it serves about over 200 gigs of neuroimaging software. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second, actually. So, and then the data, you can connect it to your Docker container via cloud storage, or you can mount it via local directory and things like that. Uh, it's cross-platform, anything that can run Docker and is, uh, and currently we only support uh, AMD 64 type. Uh, can, so ARM's not currently supported, but anything Intel AMD type is supported. So we can load up any of those softwares into this. Um, one of the challenges with, um, containers on your PC and non uh, HPC applications. In HPC, you can download these hundreds of uh, Singularity containers and keep them on a shared storage that uh, the users, when they log in, they can use it from the central shared storage at a, at a high availability storage. Um, but the problem is when you're doing it on your own machine, you have to start downloading like hundreds of gigs of software. You need to store it. Uh, you might not have a network bandwidth to handle that much data and that kind of thing. Uh, this is where a big project called CBMFS really came into life for us. Um, it's basically the CERN virtual file uh, management system. So it lets uh, it's something that CERN's developed to manage their large amounts of data sets and software. Uh, one of the uh, the main focus of CBMFS is that it's very slow to write into, but it's fast to read which is uh, ideal for our use case because we just want to write out the containers to the storage, but then read them very quickly. You mount this CBMFS um, share onto your local processing system, wherever it is. Um, the, um, it also deduplicates it, so it, it, because a lot of containers are exactly the very similar. They only have a few changes between them. It actually requires way less storage than if you have to store them separately as files and things. Um, so it's distributed across by a number of uh, proxy servers. We've expanded this to much more. It's uh, supplied by Oracle Cloud Processing. Um, so we use that to, um, um, we can send these containers off to uh, HPC desktop, uh, HPC if uh, we can get through the security, uh, desktops, laptops, uh, cloud uh, like a Nectar or um, a commercial cloud as well. And you can mount them directly and they require no um, installation for software. You have access to all the software immediately uh, and you don't have to download individual software. And if you use Neuro Desktop, you can have access to the whole thing inbuilt. It's all packaged in. Oh yeah, so if you if you go, if you do mount it, you'll notice just a huge list of containers with all the versions as well. Um, one of the other challenges is this is this is applicable to CBL Wiener. Um, if you've used containers, uh, you'll know that um, running a container is, is a bit messy. It's doable, but uh, you have to run write this long um, piece of uh, uh, command in order to just act. Let's say you want to use FSL mats. You have to like run this whole thing. Um, this is not, I mean, it's, it's doable, but it's just not very clean. Uh, a couple of uh, um, developers at um, CAI, uh, Stefan Bowman and Tom and Shaw, they uh, 
they came up with this wrapper script called Transparent Singularity. Basically what it does is it exposes all, like say FSL, uh, it exposes all of the binaries in FSL into a directory and then points your uh, path to that directory. By doing that, what that means is you can use the this FSL mask, for instance, natively. Like you just start typing it, it'll start coming up and your commands can use it naturally as well by just doing this exposure. Uh, when you module load, uh, let's say this container, uh, it will expose uh, all of the binaries in this container on its own. So you don't have to use the, ex the singularity execution script to access it. You can just directly call the uh, software just like you would if it was natively installed. Um, yeah, and we uh, combine with, uh, we um, integrate LMOD, so uh, like like this, so if you module load FSL, you can use the uh, system directly, and you can combine different uh, modules and use them simultaneously, uh, and have more control over your uh, software um, environment. So, so um, the, all of our, yeah. As, so the, 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 um, the transparent uh, singularity is a similar as uh, a module load, right? Uh, no, a trans module load is uh, managing the loading and unloading of modules so that your part space has or does not have that software. Mm -hmm. uh, transparent singularity exposes uh, singularity containers as if they're native. So uh, let's say you have a singularity container of FSL. Mm -hmm. uh, it just unpacks FSL into a direct, all the binaries of FSL into a directory. So yeah. now, and adds that to your path when you module load it. So now if you start typing or use one of the commands in FSL, it will already detect it because it's in your path already and it, it integrates with the module system yeah. to do this. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. Um, it's, I think uh, it's probably when, when you use it, you'll, you'll notice the, the, the difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all, all of our Neurodesk stuff is on the neurodesk.org website, every, every, all about how to use it, how to run it, um, how to contribute and everything. Uh, if you have any issues with using the system, uh, you can just raise a GitHub issue or contact me, uh, not a problem. Um, our CVMFS architecture is displayed there. Uh, we also have a bunch of tutorials that have been contributed by a lot of our community. So you can go there and try out some of the uh, typical uh, analysis of workflows and see how to, how to use them with the system. Uh, we've also got a new um, a platform called Neurodesk Play. It just lets you run Neurodesk in the cloud without any installation or anything. It just runs in your browser. It's uh, supplied by Oracle Cloud Resource. So uh, it just lets you try out Neurodesk. Uh, all you have to do is go to neurodesk.org and there's a play button and you click there and it'll guide you to this link over here. So neurodesk.org will get you whatever information you want on Neurodesk. Um, also on a side thing, I think uh, this is uh, some interesting developments that have happened despite uh, apart from us, which is now window, if you're a Windows 11 user, you know that uh, they have a new Wayland display um, layer. So it lets you execute um, things in a Windows subsystem for Linux and have them just use the Wayland display server to render it into your Windows host. I mean, it's pretty new, but this is uh, leading us into a right path where you have a sort of native uh, of Linux experience in your window. So uh, we've, uh, we've obviously, uh, we can integrate CVMFS and our containers with this. So you can just run your container straight from Windows and it'll just display as a GUI. So you have full visualization. Uh, this is a bit, a bit early, but it's, it's a good sign. We, we've got more stuff coming in the future that can help us. Um, so I think uh, this, is, this is a basic idea of how we've tried to achieve um, reproducibility everywhere. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect, but we're trying to reduce as much of the, uh, the overhead as much possible and try to improve it. Um, so this is just our general roadmap. Um, um, so I think, I think that's about it for me. And uh, our full contributors, I'd like to thank ACCS for giving us this opportunity to present and all of these uh, wonderful people and groups. Thank you so much, Aswin. I really like that four levels of uh, um, hardwares. Um, Great. Um, so we, um, how about we, we quickly finish the machine learning that part and we can have a QA and a sessions. Um, we can um, question time. Okay. So now we keep going. The, uh, the next one was going to show the Jupyter Notebook um, CVL and again, this is CVL at the Massive and uh, um, and then examples of uh, machine learning um, example. So machine learning examples, we're gonna go through with everyone later so in hands-on session. So I'll just quickly touch base on that. Um, again, so that things has been 
delivered before. So you can through the OSF or the YouTube channels and you can on YouTube, yeah, it's on YouTube. You can see the original um, sem webinar, uh, seminar and also the hands-on sessions. Um, again, in here, we just highlight the GPU Accelerate and the other benefits like the uh, GPU lab, and so Jupyter lab and the Python environment. So actually all of the introductions to machine learning on HCP at Massive, um, the best talk is Kawa's talk that she delivered before. So there's a couple of minutes talk and it just covered everything of HCP's Jupyter notebook and some other things. Um, I will quickly get that set up. There it is. Chris Lyons is name on this slide. He's here as an attendee somewhere. Um, he also works on the HPC team here at the Monash Research Center, where we look after two clusters, Massive and Monarch. We're going to be talking about Massive today. I'll try to keep this speedy because I know we're running out of time. This is a rough outline of the Always. talk. We're going to talk about why you should want to use an HPC. We're going to talk about software. We're going to talk about data. We're going to talk about those very expensive GPUs everyone wants a slice of. Uh, we're going to have a chat about communities that are forming around machine learning and research, and then there's a slide at the end with a list of links. So why should you care about having to learn how to use a high-performance computer on top of everything else you have to learn? You know, you've got your domain-specific knowledge, um, and then you also have to do all this machine learning and programming on top. Why should you have to learn this new tool as well? It's a good question. Uh, High-performance computing is all about getting resources you need, computational resources, storage, GPUs, CPUs, to get stuff done efficiently. Um, you'll see some words thrown around, high-performance computer, supercomputer, cluster. I'll use them pretty interchangeably. There's some differences we can argue about in a different type that I won't cover here. Um, but the important thing to know is it is a big shared resource. We put as many resources as possible into one spot, and we say, everyone, please share. We put a scheduler on top of those resources in our case slum that says, here's who gets to go first. Hey, you've used 50 CPUs today. Someone else should get a turn now. Um, it's all about making sure people get fair access to resources. How's that supposed to help you with your machine learning? And that's a really tricky question to answer. Traditionally, HPC has been really well suited for other domains of science. Uh, things like physics with computational fluid dynamics. I don't know much about that personally, um, but there's sort of a series of traditional HPC communities and machine learning challenges are one of the traditional HPC problems. Here at Massive, we've done a little bit of work to try and make machine learning a little bit more accessible on this hardware because it is a bit different. Uh, this talk is going to sort of cover the things we think we've done to make things easier. Uh, that's it. We're always learning and improving. Um, so we're always happy to give feedback if you find things aren't as busy as they should be. Uh, what's going to happen to you when you start doing machine learning is you're going to be using big data. So you're going to need lots of storage and you're going to find you need lots of computational resources because you have so much data. So that's really the motivation for, for telling you about HPC and why you probably care about learning how to use this tool. Here at Massive, what makes us really cool for machine learning is we have loads of GPUs, particularly in comparison to other HPCs in Australia. Uh, we tried to provide really good support for Python in particular. A lot of HPC programming has been done in C and some of those more challenging languages in the past. We all know machine learning is mainly done in Python and languages like R as well. Um, we've tried to provide interactive access. So I've just told you there's a scheduler that makes you wait in line for resources. We're trying to reduce the barrier to entry by letting you play and prototype on our cluster, which is a little bit different. We're trying to build communities, we're trying to give you central data sets, and we're trying to make sure there are people like me who care about helping you as well. So friendly HPC benefits. Awesome. So let's talk about Python. If you're doing machine learning, you're probably going to have to do some stuff with Python. What have we done to make this less painful on our cluster? Uh, we've given you a bunch of detailed documentation on how to set up Python environments. And I think Chow was exposed to last night putting together an Anaconda environment. Um, in particular, Miniconda and Anaconda um, uh, distributions run in Python, and they do things like putting all of your packages in your home directory. On HPC, your home directory is not very big, it is the wrong place to store your packages. Um, there are lots of little things like this that crop up when you start to use Python on our cluster, and we've tried to remove all of those barriers by giving you these other instructions and installation scripts to use Python on our cluster. So this is one thing we've done to try and make machine learning easier. 
Uh, there's a picture of our documentation page here. Um, all of these things are linked throughout the presentation. It should step you through and get you set up. Something else we found really quickly was that machine learning users really love to prototype and fiddle and play with hyperparameters while they're doing their training and learning. And whilst they're learning how to use um, machine learning frameworks, they'll often be playing with Jupyter notebooks. Uh, so we provide desktops on our massive HPC, but we found that giving a Jupyter lab environment also made things easier for our users. I think Chow will show you that uh, it's more of a demo later, so I won't talk too long about it. Um, but we have tried to provide these interactive resources for you on Massive to make things easier while you're learning and while you're testing, um, whilst making sure you still have access to the hardware you need. We also found out later that lots of people didn't want to use Jupyter Lab because they actually like using VS Code to see their Jupyter notebooks, Visual Studio Code is an IDE, um, and lots of people are doing their prototyping there. So uh, Chris Hines, who is here somewhere, said, sure. Let's make a button for it in our desktop interface so you can use Visual Studio Code, you can use some instructions, um, and you'll be able to use VS Code uh, on the HPC. So we've done all of these things to try and make that interactive prototypey stuff easier. Uh, reference data sets, I just touched on this earlier. So we found out uh, pretty rapidly that machine learning uh, is often done with four reference data sets. And so there were people with the same copy of the same data set 50 times on our shared system. We said, well, that's a bit silly. Let's put one copy somewhere that everyone can share. Um, so we started to download shared data sets. We found out that uh, on our high performance file system, we have a Lustre file system, um, many machine learning data sets struggle to perform very well. Unfortunately, a lot of them are very small image files. Uh, so we moved into a different type of file system, hopefully to improve performance of people using our cluster. And we're continuing to improve this all the time. We're getting feedback on what data sets we could host and how things are going, what we can do to improve this. Uh, we have a documentation page about all the data sets available. We do have machine learning specific data sets, so four reference data sets like ImageNet, AlphaFold is all about protein folding, um, Microsoft Cocoa, Cognitive Protection. Uh, but we also have a variety of memory imaging reference data sets. So a variety of the HCPs are available. We have the brain GSP data set. Don't ask me for details on these. I'm not a neuro imaging expert. Um, but these things are all available. And Funnel has actually done quite a lot of work to make these available to our communities so that your data is already on the cluster that you'll be using to do your work rather than you having them in a bit of an hour. Small links here in case you're interested in seeing what else is available. Um, the application process for these data sets is pretty straightforward. You press two buttons um, in many cases and someone approves so that you have access. Some of them are a bit more complicated because they are medical imaging data sets, um, but we try to make the process to access and those are massive and extremely straightforward. Right, I'm rushing through this. GPUs, I told you we had lots and lots of GPUs on massive and we found that people would struggle to pick which GPUs they wanted and so we had to write some documentation. Small picture here, there's a table here that tells you what GPU is probably right for you, depending where you're at in your machine learning journey, uh, what's available, how many GPUs, how much RAM you're going to get. Um, and so we've done quite a lot of brand GPU documentation to make this process more straightforward. Uh, when I said we had lots of GPUs, apparently we have 408. I'm shocked by this. Um, a subset of them are available for interactive use, and some of the bigger, beefier boxes are available for submitting to the scheduler, submitting to the queue, once you've got a workflow and worked out. So again, lots of documentation available on this, hopefully to help you along, but we're always happy to help you work out how to use the GPUs if you find they're not working as expected, um, or there's things you need help to set up with. Uh, we want to do some benchmarking. Communities, this is a big one. Um, I think we can stop on here. So I have all of the communities and um, some resources in, in the slide. Um, which is here. Um, so this, all of this, if you're interested in the machine learning, I've just sort of mind of a time, probably not everyone's really interested. So if you really want into it, so here is all, so many of the information that you can check with. Um, and then we just quickly go through what is the exactly the hands-on sessions that I want you to, to do. So I particularly choose something that's easy to understand for us as a, a neuroimaging person. So I'm more from like a user's point of view to say, okay, how do we get this thing as a concrete example? So 
This data is, um, I think it's published the data attached to these papers and then this also and this Kangol's website. So like they put this particularly task and ask to people the similar question and people put in this script and try to achieve it like a little competition. So what this doing is quite interesting, uh, but it's a simple. So there's a type of a brain tumor is called uh, low grade gliomas. So as you can see, the low grade gl gl gliomas, um, the LGG is not very clear to see in T1 image. I was, it's pretty, um, yeah, straightforward, you can see in the flare, which is a type of a T2 weighted images. And they have a bunch of imaging to as the training data set. So there's a, so many of flare sequences, imagings, and they're typical for the, for the tumor in the clinical populations. And there are hundred around participants and they all have different type of sequences. So they slice, um, how many slices for the scan is different. Um, and how many slices that has been detected as tumors are different. So you can see this varies of all of the imagings and the dimensions and the uh, um, resolutions. But they will have the slices with the tumor has been detected. Um, and then there are 1,373 and this is the training data. So what is actually doing is they pair this one. So they ask the uh, professional um, uh, tracers or the, the clinicians to trace where the tumor it is and save as a, um, a binary mask. So if they're thinking there's a tumor, it's one, if it's not, it's a zero, and this is the ground truth. So what the computer is having is they have the raw image and they have the ground truth and they're trying to let it to learn. See, you can have a model and see whether that models can do the similar things. If I throw another image with the tumors detected in there, can, how well they trace each other. So it's quite simple. So there's a lot of data preparation and pre-processing and the model buildings, model training and the results. Um, so we mainly focusing on how to get things running and then how to access to this Jupyter lab. Um, as Kyle was talking before, so we have a beta, so which is Strudo tools, uh, which is we can get a turn off from here, um, from beta versions, beta Strudo, which is Strudo tool. And then we're getting there, we'll go through this later to get um, request um, a, um, a Jupyter let notebook running. And I only have, a, for this one, we're just in the one script and then we copy on there and then run through different cells. Um, we're going to see whether the trained model is supposed to trace the tumors as good as a human expert. As so I will talk about, we can have a GPU accelerate, but for today, we just use the light computing. The P4 should be good enough. And then we're going to do a little bit test this to see, because that's iteration. So when you're training the model, if you know a little bit of uh, machine learning, so we can try to see a, a short version. So if we're just training that four times, or training the 40 time, see what is the results it's gonna look like. So this is the things we're gonna to run through quickly. It's an easy to be understand model. Um, yeah, I think we're still running over time. So um, we're in the, as planned, we should be Q and A sessions. Um, so I said, as when um, Jay and Juliana are all um, on the line. So if you have any questions, we can use this time to ask, or you can ask any question to me. Um, yeah, and also if we start to, we can also help everyone to set up the, um, the log into um, Massive CBL, and we can just try to start with the first um, hands-on sessions. Um, yeah. Question? Oh, all good. Well, I have one uh, bit of a practical one in terms of uh, the data that I work with is 70 data and that uh, work that is a lot of um, gigabytes uh, and level of terabytes that I'm working with. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're, when I request, if I request something through Massive, what is the scope of how much can you actually get in right. terms of hard drive? This is a very good question. So I think, um, Jay, what is the default um, size of a project? 
Uh, for okay, so it depends whether you're accessing it as a massive partner or a um, or as a, through the CVL project. I think with the CVL project, it was a hundred, so it was fifty gig on the projects folder and a hundred gig on Scratch. Um, if you access a project through a massive partner, I think this the defaults five hundred gig on projects and. Ooh, I'm thinking it might be, it's at least a T on Scratch. Yeah, so. Okay, so if it's a massive partner, I could actually get that. But you are, where, where you, 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 you're Melbourne, Melbourne Uni, University, right? Yeah. I think in Melbourne Uni, Melbourne Uni is part of the, the ACCS partner. Um, uh, I think so, but the Melbourne Uni itself isn't actually a member, a, a massive partner. Oh, so um, the other way around it is if you've got a PH, if you've got a supervisor who's working on a project who's, a, who's let's say, from Monash um, and, and they're, the, they're the, the CI on the project, they can have a project. They, they can apply for a project and that will then allow you to get in if that helps. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Just get a Monash yeah. people involved. Yeah. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, question, more questions? All right. So if, in, if no questions, we can start the hands-on sessions. Um, and then, yeah, and Jay has, uh, and Aswin, so yeah, so if, if you have some other things to do, feel free to um, leave this Zoom meetings. Um, I will start with- Thank you, Thank you. Sharing, Thank you, Char, thank you, everyone. Bye, Joanne. So. It's going to be more relaxed now. Um, So remember, we have the three things we want to do. The first, we're looking at the data collections. Um, and then second is the, we run some structured imaging analysis toolbox. And then the third one is we we'll do a machine learning stuff. I will see we have uh, nearly 30 minutes. So try to squeeze in 10 minutes each. Um, and if, if you, or if you want to stop and asking some question interactively, I'm happy to skip a couple of things and we can just go through of your questions, yeah. So um, I actually want, so everyone's to try to log into Massive or CVL add to Massive. Um, if you could just, My, oh, my mouse is okay. Okay. Um, if you go to website and sudo web, and you will see this, the desktop massive.org.au. And here is where we, the starting point. And now here, let's choose M3 and uh, CVR at Massive. But down the track, if you later, you get access to CVR at uh, Wainers UQ. So you use the CVR, um, I think it, the, where are they? CVR at Wainer. It's probably different, different URLs to get into here. But once you click on here, you go login. So because this is already login, so it doesn't give me um, the chance to choose. But if, if you log in, you will have these options. The signing with the AAF, I think Harriet, you will be in this case. And then all the others probably use this case. So you choose the signing with um, Gmail, uh, so with Google, and put your uh, the Gmails that you you, you put it into um, this, um, so this Google Sheet. And that should all the way take you to see this interface. Um, where are you? Yeah, should this interface. And that's do, so they already reserved the light computing for us. You go light compute, 
And then here's the answer to your question. If we want a visual node, actually they can be really powerful. So we're starting with the six cores. You can put in the 60 cores, it's up to you. And then memory 55, um, and then the time. So what time is very important means you estimate how long you're gonna use it for. So for us, probably two hours is, to, is good for today. So we just get the two and then we stay with uh, OH21 and then everyone can click launch. So after you click launch, I don't want to click because this one is running on something else. Um, have you got to launch and then it's working in that way? Um, I think we'll they reserved the, um, the project for us. Um, Okay. Hey, Juliana. Um, actually not. Do you, can you ask um, uh, Philip to back to the, uh, the, 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 the troubleshooting Zoom rooms? Because um, we couldn't, for the temporary account, couldn't start the, um, um, couldn't start the desktop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're in the troubleshooting room. Yes, yes, thank you. That's a typical hand up question like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, we've got the time and the rush. And then this, this uh, the map here. Yeah. Yeah, the... Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Can I get up? Hello, yes. Okay. Um, we we'll just, uh, I'm going to share the screen. I just want to show you there's some problems back here. Um, mm -hmm. So see, we all all of the temporary account have these issues. So when they clicking launch, um, there's actually.
actually nothing come up. So desktop display is not really flash that what it is because they got error message and they don't have the OH21. Yeah. Um, it tries to go through. Uh, so launch desktop, so I can say live control. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing, one of the reverse signs Uh, I think that's for the other stream always for the, for the other the, the other three uh, except mine. Mine is working. We also maybe we we can we try and so we can this try sudo better. And we can give us a video and not log in. So you are serious about me. Um click desktop and then get in the GPU, select the first one. Right, thank you. Uh, one hour trading, let's click launch. Yeah, it's the same error. Get it, same error message. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm happy to follow just. Yeah, maybe I, while you're doing you that, mm. I would just do in mine. Um, yeah. Okay. So you're supposed to be the same as me at launch, and you go into this desktop. Okay. So the first thing, the first task that we want to do is to looking at everything that are prepared for, for everyone. Is that on Zoom or? Um, yes, probably. This, yeah, it's down to me. Probably he probably can fix it. Uh, you can ask it. Philip, do you do you still want this computer on the Zoom or you can fix it on the back? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, so we, we gotta try 10 minutes later, hopefully. So I got everything's in here. So supposed to be, if everything happened correctly, you can see this as well. And you go to your home and everyone was sitting in one project called uh, OH21. And then one of the hard drive we call this OH21 scratch, which have a larger space. So I put it some of the data for us. Um, I can see, so if we refresh, um, there's Harris folders, and that's everyone else's folders. If you find your temporary account folders, and you, you will see that should be empty. And all of things I prepared is here. You go to APBS uh, workshop, and then I have, have three tasks there. So the first one is the data collection, ACP. And if you open there, you will see. So that's what is ACP looks like, double click. They will link me to the HCP, the, where the data it is. I have a round click around, so that's all of the data in here. The second one is this. I copy one of the participants down here, and you can open it. You can see roughly what it looks like. You have pre-processed data, unpre-processed data, fixes the resting state, and the analyze S2 and S4 is the task based of function MRI data. And then Beth's, Beth poster is the DTI. Um, so that's a typical of what it looks like. And then the one we're gonna work on is this one. So the pre pro example. So I go um, open here, we will have one of the task imaging data and we will have the, um, uh, so this is um, fixed, the resting state. So this is actually running the ICA and also pre uh, example. So that's all the structures data in there. So the plan is we copy this folder into um, our home folder, um, our folders in, um, so this is here. So we copy, we got here, 
the idea is to come to here. We copy this one. Copy. Yeah, copy that um, into the OH21 scratch and find our own folder. I already copied mine here, so save some time. And then down here is all of the data is here and then we can do some visualizations. Um, yeah, so that's supposed to be like that. And we copy the data in here, check all of the data. Yeah, so this is this. Um, so this PowerPoint with the uh, actually with the screen recordings with the video is also sitting in. Um, if you're looking at here, OH21 is, is also here. So I have the two versions. So the first hands on version, so it's a PDF, it's a smaller. And also this one has the long, larger one with all of the screen recordings here. So that paired with all of the data here. So once we get to the access, you can always come here and have a try. Um, okay. So the next thing is to browse about the unzipped data. The, they have a, very, a lot of data and they have a very special files names in there. So here is some of the information that help you to guide through all of the data. What does it look like? What does that mean? Um, and then the first task we want to try is let's try FSO view, uh, sorry, FSO eyes. Before that's FSO view, FSO eyes. And then let's see how do we get access to the data. So we can look at the videos, but I'm probably going to do is I'm going to do it um, on the fly. Um, so what we can do, we can come into the folders that we just created and copied, so it's in here, tails. So imagine that you are in your own folders and now here we can right click and can say open in terminal and just simply, so we need the FSL, just module load FSL and run FSL eyes. So it's a very simple specials on uh, CVL, you have to um, have the VGL run at the beginning, otherwise they will some little bit of error message. So the FS is running, and then you can come here, add files, um, go into those folders. So preproc pre example, that's all where's the T1 image it is. Um, we can get T1 weighted. Um, Maybe let's just choose uh, T1, it's a brain, and maybe T2. Yep. Okay. Simple as that. So if people all get to know what FSL it is, you use that, I'm um, just jumps over this. Is that all good? So you, we know what is FSL it is, right? So that's all good. Uh, to save our time, so that's just FSL. Um, and then, yeah, you know, FSL, you can get the 3D views. So they can have, you can, you can map the, um, the surface and then that's all of the, um, the, the surface. So the HCP data is all really push a lot of surface based, uh, no matter it's a function MRI or the structures. So you can have that, you can get a surface based data. Um, and this to visualize the function MRI, again, that's just to skip that because you know what it is loading it and uh, get a resting state. Um, and then you can further click on it to get use the time series and you can see all of the time series. So that just show you that you can use FSL to achieve this easily. And the next one, probably let's like spend a little bit of time is the uh, Connectum workbench. Um, it's already pre-installed. There's another software it's installed. We can, this time that's a start from the applications to so go application a list of applications, um, connect on the bench, and then here it is. So the first time I have already something already pre-loaded, pre but if you want the, the new one, you can open the others and then navigate to the folders project and go to your folders and then come to here, structure. Uh, let's look at T1, maybe native space. Right, so here is loading the DOS spec file. The spec file is actually a bunch of 
the um, the surface and then the informations and then the measurements is already loaded together. So by click load, you get for this particular person's his um, structure pre-processed the image, especially free surfer and down in native space. So all of the relative distance has already been loaded. All right. um, and this is a very comprehensive um, viewer. Um, so you got the first tab, you can look at things into some montage. So which is basically the surface space. And you also come to here because you also load the volume here. So you can navigate through the volume, click all. So it works like a, um, like the FSL eyes, or just give you some more information about it. And then if you look at here, all means a, a combine of the uh, surface and volume together. I believe you can rotate it about it. You can see this each side. And then this is just the hemisphere left or right. And let's go to these levels. And what we can do is, is if you found here on this side, you get some overlays toolbox. So we can add in loading some different information. It is, for example, if we want to see um, sickness, all right. So we just let's select the sickness. So the sickness will be loaded on this surface, all right? And then you can do this. Um, control that a little bit. If you want, you can play with these shadow areas to filter the things that you don't want to see. Um, and then you say, I only want the positive, oh, sorry, no, that's only the negative, right? I want to do the positive larger part. So you can play with it and you can change the colors. Um, so that's basically working similar the way as what you would expect it, but just on the surface space. Putting it here is because it is very, very, um, how to say, uh, handy and then generates good pictures. I find this is way better than free view uh, when I'm dealing, especially dealing with the HCP data visualization. Um, so this is the first thing actually I was planning to everyone to be loaded and play with it. Um, if we don't have time, that's okay. The next one is we can also load the task based of function MRI. Um, again, I have the videos in there, um, but now I just show you where it is and I can just run through with you. Um, so firstly, I will just draw your attention of the files of the structure here. So HCP data, um, you really need to be careful of the structures. So remember to analyze S2, I think S2 probably is the smooth level two. So in here, uh, this is these participants and in the MNI space and end the results. So this is the three, there are actually more tasks in here, but I choose a couple of tasks in here. So working memory, motors, and then and the language. So if you're doing um, function MRI before this, some of the typical um, task-based function MRI, I think they also have NBAC, et cetera. Okay, so now um, let's load. Yeah, so that's load. So firstly, we need to load the base. So where are you? Yeah. So let's open a new window. Let's go file, add a new window. Um, and then we can open a file. The first file we need is FS average. Oops. So this loaded the base, um, the structure of that person's particularly. The difference for this one and the previous one is this one have less vertices. This has a less vertices, which is you can load the function on top of it because the function you can imagine have less resolution. So now let's find the function MRI data, which is in analyze S2. Oops. MNI space. Results. Um, let's looking at maybe motor. Yeah, and it's the level two. Um, so what we need. Yeah. 
So, so we're looking at a spec file. It's actually we need the uh, the nifty file. We're just going to drop it here. Have a look at all files here. Ah, sorry, it's here, the nifty file. But it's in the wrong spot. We want this one, want you, want this nifty file. And then that will load it on top of it. But you can't see at this moment only because we haven't selected. So we can select to the motor task. So the motor task is loaded. So the projector onto the surface. This is a surface based function MRI results. And also, um, if you know um, doing function MRI, there's a different contrast in here. They actually can be, you can actually choose. Let's do that again. Uh, because of the size, you can't actually see very clearly. Um, let's put the mouse on here. Can I actually see? Hmm. So I think remember this somewhat, sometimes they move the tongues or move the hands that a certain part of the brain is activated with that. So this is give you the ideas of what it looks like. Um, yeah. Okay, probably be good to go through this slides will be slightly faster. Um, and then the next time is the resting state. So what you can do is the fixed extended. Um, so in the fixed extended folder, it's the ICA that's been running through. So you can actually load in the ICA, I can different components and say, this is a, one of the components 17 is the, um, uh, the formal network. So it actually can be loaded in there. Um, right. Um, and down here, there's the other things that I can, I can keep talking and then showing that's how the pictures is gonna be generated. But if you followed all of the uh, the slides and then the, the videos, you should be able to get access to all of that. So everything is planned. You just need to copy the folders in there and just looking at the, the, the PDF files and then the, uh, um, the PowerPoint file. Yeah. So this might really mind off the time. We, yeah, I think we only have a couple of minutes left. So maybe we just, we only have a couple of people. So shall we go through the structure or you just want to have some questions? I'm happy just to answer some questions. If you want to asking something, I'm happy to show in on here. Um, attentively, if you don't have any thinking, you can, I can just keep going to have a look at the, um, to show you what is the, the second part I'm preparing for. How do we run the structure image parallelly? And then I can just touch base of that. Um, any questions? Maybe it's always. I have I have one question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but it's a it's a bit more like general in terms of what we all of the content that we saw before. Mm. Um, one of them one was the containers, the nerd desk containers. Yes. So um, based on uh, using can we can use that in CBL, but it's, that's an alternative to the modular system that we have in CBL, right? Yeah, yeah certainly. I think these two things are in they not very. If you run it interactively, they're actually feeling exactly the same. Okay. Slightly different is when you actually submit to Slurm and then doing the Slurm submission. So I'm not very familiar with the singularities and how to run it in Slurm, but I, I believe there will be some good ways that um, they were doing it. Remember, as when talking about the neuro, his neural desk can working on whatever the system it is. Um, so that, that's, that's probably, um, you can do that. But for module, um, for the module, uh, the module module load, that's the one that I we always use, is just as simply as you go open any terminals and then you're planning say what kind of the function you need and you just module load that function or that, that software and the software will be there and running. And then it will be really helpful if you write it into the script. I take an example of the one I prepared. Say for example, if I just want to run a free server, um, here it is, I prepared in the tools. So if I want to run the free surfer, um, in here, I got two folders. First, the first is example output, so we can have a look at it, but I planned, really planned well is this, the Slurm 
uh, the free server slurp. So once here, I got some scripts. Right. And this is to tell you how to run free surface parallelly. So if we open the uh, free server task, uh, you can have a, a roughly idea as to how this is work. So for all of the tasks, you just need three things to, to, to define. So first part is what's the, what's the resource you need? And then what's the nature of this task, right? So I just give it a name, and then this belongs to OH21, which is the computation hours we deduct from here. Everything has a space, you don't need to worry about it. So the next one important thing is CPU per task. So to run this script, how many CPU do I need? Just one CPU is fine, free server, I need four gigs of RAM is good enough. So you define these two things, the resource, and next important thing is war time. Because I'm not running the full uh, free server, I run just a first stage, 30 minutes is enough. If you run a full, you probably make it seven hours or eight hours. That's the first thing. And secondly, is to define the software and the variables that you need. So here we we'll see the module is so easy. You module load free server, this particular version it is, and you can choose the, what, the version that you can change the version. And then you set up, you know, free server before, subjects DIR, so that is what it is. So you have to point it to where the data it is. And then there's a little trick to get rid of the extension name. And then this is just the only things that you need is to run free server, reckon all with all of the information that, that it has, that's, that's been defined. And then to run this, what you need another one is just here, um, this plate. So everything is all defined, the, but only things that is not changing is actually the names. So then, um, so that's the input, the file input name. So it is here, the file, the dollar file. So what is this can do is they cat, so they read the list. So in the list is actually probably where all of your, oops. So if I prepare a couple of clips to run, and this is the input files. And then with this file, you can say, read this in list file and then run the loop. And when you run the loop, your input file is just assigned to the variable. And the aspect, which is slum, or Q submit, or whatever it is, we passed this, this script recipe to slum. Imagine slum is just a manager, and he manages all of the workers here, and you say, hey, here you go. This is everything you need. Follow this, you'll be fine. And then you can detach from uh, vision nodes at all. So you don't need, you can, switch off everything, go home. You can even stop to the, 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 the CVL. Um, and then Slum will holding all of your requests and wait until the worker is free and submit to them. So that's only the three scripts you, you need to run in the Slum. So this is the, the key part I was preparing before. Um, and then to run all of that, I also have a script here. This one is going to paired with the slides that's, that's part by part. So remember I said, I'm going to touch base of three pipelines and each type of pipelines I'll do three things. First is the visualization. For example, the free server visualizations here, you just need to copy, copy everything, so open the terminal and paste and they will run. And then the second one is if you read through here is how to run free server individually. Again, copy, and paste it into the, the terminal, it will be run. Um, and then how to run things parallelly. So here it is. So remember, one well, here, what do we need? It's a defined name equal to chaos, which is my folders. And then with that jump into the scripts, I just show you in that folder and just bash the submit template, which is we run this script. Right. And then we'll bam, 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 submit to queue um, slurm, and then the data will, the job is there. And you can use later on use um, some uh, some queue checking tools to check the queues to find where it is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So so really, it's because of the time. So I couldn't show everything to to you guys. And also, um, to mind of there will be other programs after this. Um, uh, but what I want to say is. Um, Thank you very much for coming here. And then if you could, I think I got your email address. 
I'm happy to pass the slides and then um, the slides and then the screen record to you. Um, and then if you got later on get um, onto Massive, um, please go to OH, you can have a look at here, go to OH21 Scratch um, and then go to the A ADPS workshop and then follow the slides. You will know what you want to copy it and give the run. So basically in the first one is these folders in the copy into your directory. And then for the second task, the whole thing you copy in there and I have all of the script for you that you can run through it with the slides. And then the machine learning is actually working in a different way. Uh, where's my machine learning? Yeah, machine learning is going to Strudos and then you're coming into here. So Jupyter Lab for OH21 workshop, click on here and you start a session, launch a sessions. And then once you click connect, you're coming into this view. And this is Jupyter Notebook. Um, and what you need to do is come to here, go to the third one. And there is the Jupyter Notebook that you can copy it into your folder and then we can run it. So I'll just show you what it looks like. You come to here and you open it. So the Jupyter run as a cell by cells. You actually can click that little um, once you copy to your folders, you can working on your folder and click that one and then we'll go through one by one with you. Um, I have really, really clear instructions on how to do that in the, uh, in the slide I prepared today. Um, that'll be all on Massive and also I can send it to you later. So just you can have a look at outside. Well, open it and, and the Massive. Um, yes, I think or I'll stop sharings and, uh, and uh, 